Hey guys, how are you doing? Thank you for watching my video. Um, I just want to give you guys a quick fix on a uh, crank no start issue that I had a couple days ago. Um, basically what happened was uh, my car was working fine uh, the whole entire day. Haven't had issues with it for a good while. Uh, took it, drove it around. Uh, you know, picked up stuff for lunch, whatever, shopping. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I started having uh, a little bit of issues. Um, I went to a uh, supermarket to get some um, ice cream because I had a craving for ice cream. Uh, spent about 30, 40 minutes in the supermarket picking up a bunch of stuff uh, and uh, came out. But uh, when I went in to uh, start the car, uh, did not it uh, it cranked, but it didn't start the engine. Uh, uh, it wouldn't run. Okay, so um, uh, I knew I had a bit of a situation. I didn't think it was that bad. So basically, um, what I did was um, I first thing I did, like everybody else does, is go and check the battery. All right, so basically what I did first was I turned on my headlights just to see um, whether uh, the headlights were strong or not. Now, granted, it was a, uh, it, it was, you know, in the afternoon, later in the afternoon, the sun was out, but I could still see the beam, the beams. So um, at that point, I kind of knew that it it's probably something a little bit bigger, maybe not a weak battery, maybe not a dead battery. So I put my hood up and uh, I looked at terminals just to see whether the terminals were corroded. And there was some corrosion on the terminals. All right, And uh, I've had this happen before, but mostly in the winter time where if there's corrosion in, in the terminal, um, you would get... Uh, you know, power to pretty much everything, but it won't be strong enough to crank, uh, crank, uh, you know, the vehicle. Had that happened before, so I was like, okay, hopefully this uh, this situation uh, can be resolved with something as simple as a can of Coke. So I actually bought a uh, a case of Coke. Good thing. Um, I took out a can, and uh, I poured it over the terminals. Uh, thinking it would be a quick fix. Uh, took some paper towel and pretty much just uh, clean it. Uh, and uh, at that point, I was hoping that uh, that would resolve my issue. Uh, went back into my car, tried to start it, and guess what? No, it didn't start. It didn't start. Didn't crank. No, 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 no. Uh, it, it cranked, but it didn't start. But uh, the crank was pretty strong. All right. It wasn't like it was a weak crank. It was a pretty strong crank, but it didn't, still didn't turn over. So I, you know, it, at that point I was thinking probably not, probably not a weak battery that's that's causing it because, um, you know, I was thinking it probably wasn't a weak battery that was causing it. So I was like, okay, maybe I didn't clean it up enough because uh, they were pretty tight on the battery and I didn't actually wiggle them out. But I was hoping the Coke. The fizzling and the oxidation of the coke, it did actually clean, uh, dissolve a lot of, uh, you know, the crud that was on there. there was some white greenish crud that was on there, but it was a little bit of it. Um, so at that point, I, 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 I asked a couple of people around me uh, to help me jump uh, my car. And, and uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad there was one person there who was willing to help me jump my car. I had a... Uh, you know, uh, cables in the back, took the cables out, uh, popped it on my uh, battery and, and, and then popped it on the other car's battery and had it running for a good minute or two before I actually tried to crank it and I, you know, and uh, cranked it and it cranked. It cranked as strong as it was before, but it didn't, it didn't, um, it didn't, it didn't run. It didn't turn over, it didn't run, it didn't run. So um, at that point, um, you know, at that point, I knew that uh, it, you know, I could rule out the battery. You know, I, I could 100% rule out the battery because uh, if the battery was kind of weak, you know, I would have been able to get enough juice from the other car uh, with my battery 
to at least turn it over or you know the crank would have been a bit stronger but it was the crank was strong you know from from the very start the issue so i was like scratching my head at that point um obviously uh you know it's now a bigger situation than than, than a battery situation um and uh at that point i could rule out the battery i could rule out the alternator i know it's not the battery i know it's not the alternator um, I know it's not the uh, the, the cable terminal uh, connectors, which um, could have been, but uh, I pro you know I, I ended up cleaning that up, uh, you know when I, when I got home. So um, so and it wasn't the negative cable either. It wasn't a weak ground wire because I actually did check the, the ground wire to the frame of the car, and. Uh, it was connected and uh, it wasn't really corroded, wasn't rusted, so I could uh, rule that out. And uh, ruling all those things out, um, it, uh, you know, I was like, what else could I rule out? Okay, everything else works, everything else works with the car. You know, the lights are on the dash, um, uh, the radio turned on, the, uh, the, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, blower the vent blower turned on not a problem with any of those things all right so i was thinking to myself all right i've got uh two uh canisters of ice cream and uh you know i'm, I'm killing time here and uh, i just have enough time to get my ice cream you know I, i'm running out of time to get my ice cream home i might just have to dump it dump it or maybe eat it if i eat it if i uh if i gotta get a tow truck for it but anyway back to this story all right, back to this uh, uh, DIY analysis and resolving of the situation that I was having. So, basically, um, I was like, okay, I, I know that there was no check engine light on my dash. I know that for 100% there was no check engine light on my dash uh, before this issue happened. <clears throat> so, um, I could rule out a bunch of other things. I could tentatively uh, rule out a bunch of other things, which I did. I ruled out the mass airflow sensor, the crankshaft, the camshaft, uh, you know, um, uh, throttle body, throttle mass airflow sensor, uh, throttle position sensor, um, all that stuff I could rule out because there was no, uh, um, <clears throat> there was no uh, uh, check engine light. So, what I did anyway was I plugged in an OBD2 reader, which I had. I had an OBD2 reader, a $19 cheap OBD2 reader that I had bought from uh, Walmart just a couple months ago. Um, I plugged it in, all right? There's a, there might be a chance, a very slim chance, that maybe the car's computer was having issue uh, connecting to the car itself. Uh, if you guys don't know about the ECU, uh, uh, ECM, uh, the car's computer needs to con be connected to the car for it to start. In any case, uh, I plugged it in and uh, I was hoping that it just run through, you know, the whole entire, uh, you know, run through the whole entire analysis. Uh, I plugged it in and uh, it just went through everything. It went through um, all the sensors, everything, got to the end, told me there was no issues with anything. There was no errors, nothing like that. So I could, at that point, I was 100% sure that the computer, the car's computer, ECU, uh, ECM, uh, was, was good. Could rule that out because the connection, uh, it allowed the computer to read everything. That was good. And uh, on top of that, I could rule out any of the possible uh, other issues that might cause it. Rule that out. So um, uh, at that point, I was left with uh, just a couple of things. Um, and, uh, if you guys are in the same situation, I'm pretty sure you guys are, if you guys are, are, are viewing this, uh, I'm going to help you guys out if you guys are having similar situations with this and, uh, we're going to get to how I resolved the situation and drove it back, drove my, um, uh, car back home. All right. Now, other things that I, 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 I was thinking about was maybe it was the key fob, maybe the key fob had issues. But I did change out the battery maybe like a month ago. I changed out the battery a month ago. I know the battery is strong. Uh, I, I, you know, I could tentatively uh, rule out the key fob being the issue. Um, so I was like, okay, let's uh, let's get rid of all the all the uh, simple possibilities first before we start 
on 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 you know thinking about <clears throat> you know more complicated issues that could be causing this. So if you guys are still with me, I I was like, okay, maybe it's the fuel pump. All right. So what I did was. Uh, normally what you want to do in these situations, if it was the fuel pump, you want two people, one person to turn to, to get the, the, uh, the, the car to the on position and another person, uh, in, in the back of the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the gas, you know, where you guys pump the gas at the little uh, gas cap area and, uh, take the gas cap off and, and, and listen to, you know, whether, um, uh, you could you could hear come out some kind of whizzing sound, motorized whizzing sound. So I was like, okay, uh, I didn't have anybody there at the time. <clears throat> um, what I did was, um, I, I pretty much got in the car, uh, put up all the windows, and uh, turned the car to the on position, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, I was trying to listen to a whizzing kind of motorized whizzing sound, and um, wasn't uh, I couldn't pick up I couldn't pick up anything to be honest. I think I think. Um, I couldn't pick up anything, to be honest. Uh, doing that, I did that a couple of times. So I was like, I kind of gave up on that. And uh, outside of that, I was like, okay, let, let let let's move on because if I can't, if I can't uh, pick that up, it, there could be a problem with the fuel pump. There couldn't be a problem with the fuel pump. But there's other things that that could cause the fuel pump not to go on. And uh, that's when I actually uh, looked at the fuses and the relays and all that stuff. I was looking at all the fuses. I was looking at all the fuses and I was thinking to myself, okay. Now, I didn't have a fuse tester with me. You guys in this situation, probably would be great if you guys had a fuse, fuse tester. If you guys at Walmart, they sell that. Um, I was at Walmart. I was at uh, uh, the par supermarket parking lot anyway. Um, and I was looking at the, all the fuses, seeing, trying to see if there was any kind of burnt, uh, burnt fuse, whether, uh, I was able to smell any kind of weird, um, you know, burnt smell from, from the box, but did not see any of that on a, from a, a visual check, <clears throat> on a visual check, um, you know, could not dis delineate whether there was anything, uh, whether the fuse would pop, the, the fuses look good to me. All right. Now, uh, now, now, when I got to the relays, I was, I was thinking to myself, okay, let's check the fuel pump relay, see if the fuel pump relay, uh, was the problem. Now, I couldn't test it out, okay, uh, personally, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, test it out. So, what I did was, um, I took another relay, um, on, on the board that was, had, what, you know, was the same as similar as as the relay for the fuel pump and I swapped it and then um, I got back into my car and um, and uh, you know try to turn it on and guess what guys it cranked up it cranked up guys so if you guys are in this situation and uh, you know if you guys have similar issues um, as what I what I'm explaining to you guys um, you know uh, you know, it could be your, your 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 fuel pump relay that's causing it, uh, which I'm glad about because it could have been the fuel pump that was the issue. Um, but it turned out to be the fuel pump relay. Uh, I was able to take it to, um, you know, swapped it out and then drove it to an AutoZone water relay, similar relay, and then popped it in and uh, haven't had any problems since. <clears throat> and uh, the ice cream, I spent about 45 minutes doing that. <clears throat> 45 minutes an hour DIYing that and uh, I was able to get my ice cream back home and uh, had some really good um, uh, ice cream uh, I bought like coffee flavored and uh, pecan I think and uh, I am so glad because uh, the two buckets of ice cream uh, would have melted uh, I would have been pretty disappointed, but anyway, regardless, uh, let's get back to what I was saying about, uh, this situation. Now, um, if, if you guys are in this situation and, uh, you guys want to, to do a DIY of it, just go down the list of everything that I went through, um, in this video, uh, step by step, it will pretty much eliminate, um, all the stuff that could possibly cause it now it won't eliminate everything because if you guys went through all those steps 
and uh, you guys are still having a situation, um, there is a chance that you might have like a bigger issue, maybe not a bigger issue, maybe an issue with your ignition, uh, you know, with your brakes, well, not your brake switch, but maybe your ignition um, uh, cylinder, something like that. Um, outside of that, um, yeah, guys, um, long story short, uh, just, to, just to summarize, it worked out for me. Uh, hopefully uh, this helped you guys fix your issue um, it's it's kind of common sometimes for like a fuse or a relay to to blow out and then you guys would have a crack no start situation but it worked out for me I'm glad I didn't have to put any more uh, money than I did into the situation but um, in any case um, please uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, share your story in the comment section. If you guys want to share your comment in the comment section about this video, about your situation or whatever, um, please give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe, guys. All right, have a good night.